Hi class, Mr. Falstrom is back again, and I know you've been enjoying volume so much, I thought, wow, I guess I should do another volume video, so here you go. We're going to do volume of composite figures today, so let's get started. Our learning goal. In this video, you are going to learn how to find the volume of composite figures that are made out of rectangular prisms using different strategies. So let's start off with what a composite figure is. So what is a composite figure? Well, a composite figure is a figure that is made out of several parts. And the composite figures that we will look at in this video lesson will be made out of rectangular prisms. So looking at this picture, can you tell which one is the composite figure? Is it A, B, C, or D? And the correct answer is D. And uh, the correct answer is D because this figure, it's made out of two rectangular prisms that are um, put together. All right. Well, now that we've gone over what a composite figure is, it's time to move into the main part of the lesson, which is to figure out how to find the volume of a composite figure. So let's start going over the steps of what you need to do. The first step is that we're going to have to split the figure into separate rectangular prisms. So if you look at this example right here, um, here's one possible way I could split it into two prisms. I could split it like that. So I have a, a much taller green prism, and then I have the shorter yellow prism. Or I could choose to split it that way where I have um, the yellow prism is longer on the bottom and the green one is shorter. And it really doesn't matter which way you decide to do this. It's going to, no matter how you do it, it's going to, um, you're going to end up with the same answer. So we split the figure. The second step is now that we've split it, we need to find the volume of each of these two prisms. So we need to find the volume of the green prism and the volume of the yellow prism. And once we do that, we're just going to add them together, and that's going to give us that total volume and give us that combine. So that com the, the combination of those two will give us the volume for the composite figure. So let's look at example one where I've chosen to show, um, I've chosen to split it this way. So we've already taken care of splitting it. Can you remember what the next step is after you've split it? That's right. After you split it, we're going to find the volume of each separate prism. So if you look at the green one, uh, it has a length of 2, it has a width of 2, and it has a height of 5. And so remember, our formula for volume is any combination of length times width times height. We can do it in any order we want. Here I did um, length times width times height, so 2 times 2 times 5. And it gives us a volume of the green prism of 20 cubic units. And then for the yellow, it has a length of three, a width of two, and a height of two. So we're gonna multiply those three numbers and you would get a volume of 12 cubic units for the yellow prism. So now that we've got the volume of each of them, do you remember what the last step is? And the last step is we just add those two volumes together. So. I add the 20 units for the green plus the 12 units from the yellow, and that gives me the total volume of 32 cubic units for the composite figure. Now let's look at another example where we've split the prism differently. And I just, I'm doing this just to show you that you're going to get the same answer. Even if you split it a different way, that's not going to affect the final answer. So um, step one, we split the figure. That's done. Step two, we're going to find the volume of each of the two prisms. 
and you can see on this one it's a little bit different now the green prism uh if we look at that it's length and width are two the height is only three it gives us a um volume of 12 cubic units and the yellow one is going to be a length of two a height of two i'm sorry a length of five a width of two and a height of two and it's going to give us a volume of 20 cubic units and again that final step we're going to add those both together and we end up with the same answer that we got on the first example 32 cubic units so now that we've went over that let's practice So I'm going to be asking you to kind of try and think about the steps. So what's the first step that we need to do to find the volume of this composite figure? And the first step is that we are going to have to split it into two separate rectangular prisms. In this case, this is how I've chosen to show it. So now we've done that and we split it into two prisms, what's our next step? All right, so now that we've split the composite figure into two prisms, our second step is that we need to find the volume of each prism. So we need to find the volume of the yellow one and the volume of the red one. So go ahead and solve the volume for the yellow one. And Go ahead and fi find out the volume of the red one. So the volume of the yellow would be, uh, it has a length of five, a height of three, and a width of two. If we multiply those three numbers together, we will, you will get 30 cubic units. And for the red prism, it has very similar dimensions. It has a length of five and a width of two and a height of two. And if we multiply those numbers together, we get a volume of 20 cubic units. So now that we've got the volume of each of the two prisms, what is the last and final step that we need to do? And it is, we have to add them together. So our final answer should be, 50 cubic units because the 30 units of the yellow prism plus the 20 units of the red prism gives us a combined volume for the whole figure of 50 cubic units. And just because I really want to quiz you on this, go ahead. Tell me what is the first step that you have to do when you find the volume of a composite figure. And what is the, after you've done the first step, what is the next step? And after you've done the next step, what is the last step? I want to show you a different strategy now. Um, it's a subtraction strategy. And you might be like, really? We're subtracting? I thought volume was all about multiplying and adding how is subtracting going to help us get the volume of a composite figure well um it's an interesting strategy i'm showing it to you and that doesn't mean that i think it's the best strategy um but i i think it's an interesting strategy and sometimes depending on what shape your composite figure is in um sometimes i do use it not all the time so i just want to show it to you so uh here we go so we're going to use the problem that we just did earlier with the yellow and the red prism. And so I want you to kind of look at this. And if you look at the red prism, you can see that it's basically identical to the yellow prism. The only difference is that it's one layer shorter. So if we kind of look at it, it's almost like if that layer were there, it would almost be like a whole giant prism. There's just that one piece that's missing, like a missing part. And so... If we can kind of pretend that that part is there, that can help us actually, we can use that as a, as a subtraction strategy. So um, it, if, we, if we look at that layer, that layer is actually the key to giving us another option for finding the total volume. 
And so this is how the subtraction strategy will work. First step is we're going to pretend that that layer is there. And now that that layer is there and we're, and we pretend that makes both prisms identical. So if the volume of the yellow is 30 cubic units, that means the red one would also be 30 cubic units, which would give us a total volume of 60 cubic units. So we're pretending that they're both the same size. That means that we can add both the volumes. So what we're going to do now is we pretended that both prisms had the same amount of layers. And now we're actually going to, now that we've got the volume of that, we're going to take that one layer back. So if we subtract that one layer from the prism, right, that's what the original one looked like. It was missing that layer. So we have to kind of subtract it from that volume. And so one layer is equal to 10 cubic units. It's got a length of five, a width of two, and a height of one. So one layer is worth 10 units, cubic units. So this is basically how the subtraction strategy works. We start out with this prism. We started out with this. Then we pretended we filled in the missing part. We filled it all the way up. And once we did that, then we got a total volume of 60 units. And from there, we subtracted that one layer back, which it's worth 10. And now we know that the final answer is 50 cubic units. Which strategy so far do you like best? Do you like the original strategy of just dividing them up into two prisms, getting the volumes and adding them together? Or do you like the subtraction strategy? There's no right or wrong answer here. I'm just curious to know which one you like. And then um, if you want to tell me why, I'd also really like to hear why you like it. So please um, spend a little bit of time and try and give me that extra information. And also um, between the two strategies, the subtraction strategy or just the divide them up, multiply the volumes and add them together, which one do you think is the most efficient for you? Which one do you think has less steps and would be less work for you. Um, personally, I, I like the first strategy. I like dividing them up and um, just getting the volumes and adding them together. Um, I don't really think either. I don't think that it's that much faster than the subtraction strategy. They both have, you know, multiple steps. Um, you know, I, again, I don't dislike the subtraction strategy. It's just for whatever reason, it's just not my favorite. Although there are some problems where I think it is a good idea. So. Here's another strategy, yet another strategy that some of you might have noticed. I just want you to notice that, hey, if you just count the layers on this problem, the yellow prism has three layers and the red prism has two layers, which gives us a total of five layers. And if one layer is equal to 10 cubes, some of you might've just figured out, Hey, I can just do five layers times 10 cubes. And there's my 50 cubic units. And that's a great idea. Um, it's not going to work on every, composite figure problem that you'll see though uh, it works on this one because both um both prisms are basically identical it's just that one is one layer shorter you there are some other types of composite figure problems where the layers are completely different dimensions different sizes and shapes and so it won't work on that but if you get a nice one like this where they're basically almost exactly the same this is another one you could try um, so again, since this composite figure right here, the very, very first one we looked at, it doesn't have identical layers. Um, it doesn't really work so much on this one. Um, it'd be better to either just find the volume of the two 
different prisms and add them together, or you could try the subtraction strategy. That would probably be the best choices for um, one like this. So it's time to test your knowledge. And here's an example of a composite figure that is definitely not made of identical prisms. So again, if we go back to our original strategy that we were working on, not the subtraction strategy, but the very, very first one, what is the first step? And the first step is to find the volume of each prism. And to do that, we have to first divide them up and see them. And so I've decided to um, split them up like this. So that's really the first step is splitting them up. And now that we've done that, we need to find the volume of these three prisms. We got to get the volume of the pink one the yellow one, and the blue one. So what is the total volume of this composite figure? I want you to um, go ahead and find the volume. You can use any strategy that you like. Um, there's other strategies that I haven't talked about. Um, so if you think you see another way or a way where you think you can figure it out, you can totally use that. I don't care which one you use. Um, I think the very, very first one that we've been spending the most time on, um, if you're not really sure which one to try, go with that one. Um, if you felt confused by the subtraction strategy, I would say definitely don't do it on this one because it's a challenge for this one. Um, but go ahead, let's find the volume and I'll give you the answer in a little bit. So the total volume of this composite figure, let's start off with the pink prism. And you could honestly count the cubes on that one. It's uh, It's got a volume of six cubic units. And then if you look at the yellow prism, it has a volume of eight cubic units. It's got a width of two, a length of two, a height of two. So two times two times two is eight. So... If we already add the yellow and the pink together, that's going to give us 14 cubic units. And then if we look at the blue prism, um, it's got a length of 5, a width of 4, and a height of 3. So 5 times 4 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60. So we've got to add those numbers together. So 60 plus 8 plus six, and that would give you a total volume of 74 cubic units. Let's come on back to the learning goal. So the goal of this video is to teach you how to find the volume of composite figures that are made out of rectangular prisms using different strategies. So I hope that after watching this video, you've learned something and you've found a strategy that you like and that now when you we do these types of problems in class you're going to feel um, set up to be successful let's recap so a composite figure is a figure that's made out of several parts and different size rectangular prisms can be combined to form composite figures and the most common strategy that we would use to find the volume of a composite figure that's made out of rectangular prisms is we're going to divide it into individual prisms. So in this example here, we divided it into a green prism and a yellow prism. Um, we would find each of their volumes and then we would add them back together for the combined volume. Um, there are other strategies such as subtraction, like find the missing part. And then um, so like pretend it's an entire prism and then subtract that missing part. And then what's left is the actual composite figures volume. Um, so there are other strategies too, and I really don't care which one, um, 
you like it's 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 all about whatever feels comfortable for you so thanks for participating and watching this video and i'll see you again on the next one